The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... centuries, we have heard of the search for the fountain of youth, for the magic elixir of life eternal. No, oh, to be young always, to hold age and death at arm's length. Put it this way, if you could live forever, would you want to? A word of caution before you reply. What might seem at first blush to be a vision of delight could also be a reality of horror. I just thought I'd call... I'm your neighbor. Welcome to Lake Raymond. Well, thank you. Won't you come in, Mrs... Uh, Mallory. Mrs. Mallory. Mm. Uh, Eleanor has gone to town on an errand. Oh, <laughs> such a lovely-looking child. Uh, must be wonderful to have a granddaughter like that. Granddaughter? Well, she is your granddaughter, ain't she? Eleanor happens to be my wife. Oh. Oh, <laughs> well, I... Oh, me and my big mouth. Well, that's, that's all right. <laughs> She does look young, doesn't she? Oh, yes. Yes, she does. Well, how, how old would you guess? Uh, oh, she... um, 16, 17, 18 top. Ah, deceptive. Deceptive. She was 18 the day we were married. Oh, are you, uh, are you newlyweds? <laughs> newlyweds, my dear Mrs. Mallory. We're about to celebrate our 45th wedding anniversary. <laughs> mystery drama, Age Cannot Wither Her, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Jennifer Harmon. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. seem to inspire hopeless passion in men. They are women whose love can never be won, and if captured, can only be held for the moment. We tend to sympathize with the unfortunate men who are caught in their web, but the truth is, it's the woman, as usual, who pays the price in the end. Our story is set in the town of Raymont, named, of course, after the celebrated Lake Raymont, that vast, beautiful body of water high in the Adirondack Mountains. A very determined-looking middle-aged lady is walking with purposeful stride down the main street. She has an expression on her face that bodes ill for someone. Oh, oh Sheriff. Hmm? Oh, yeah, Mrs., um... Mallory. Oh, yes, yeah, Mrs. Mallory. Roberta Mallory. It used to be the sheriff knew everybody in town. Uh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Mallory. I'm new here. I spoke to my husband and the neighbors, and they said, what are you getting involved for? Involved in what? But I'm a citizen. Now, it's my duty to uphold the law. Has the law been violated? Is murder a violation of the law, sheriff? You here to report a murder? These people, the Burnhams, they have the house next to ours on the lake. Now, he's in his 60s, maybe 70s. And she can't be more than 20. Now, what kind of marriage is that? Well, now, Mrs. Mallory, I, I must ask Those you... Those things don't work. They can't work. And they can lead to murder. Well, you have any facts for me? Well, it was just this morning. We are sitting around the dock, my husband and me. And we share this dock with the Burnhams, you see. Well, him and her, him in swimming trunks, and she in that bikini of hers, had come down to the water... We exchange polite hellos. We're not close. And they get into the sailboat. They got this 16-footer, and off they go. Yes? Well, three, four hours later, the sailboat comes back. He's all alone. She's not with him. So I say to him, uh, where's Miss Burnham? And you know what he answers? Well? He gives me the funniest look, and he says, uh, obviously, she's not here. Well, what happened to her? I don't know what happened to her. 
Well, what did Mr. Burnham say had happened to her? He said absolutely nothing. Now, here's my point. He can keep his mouth shut when I ask him, but he's got to open it when you ask him. Mr. Burnham, you tell me what happened to your wife? I, I don't know. Sir, as I understand it, two of you went sailing this morning and you came back alone. Yes. Where is your wife? Uh, the sheriff, I've already told you. I, I don't know. Did she leave the boat? Well, obviously. She wasn't there when I returned to the dock. Mr. Burnham, are you feeling all right? I... Uh... I have a headache. I, I suppose it was carelessness on my part. See, we had a very strong breeze on the lake, and I... Well, she let go of the boom in order to tack, and it swung free. Well, you know how swiftly it travels during that maneuver. It just caught me across the head. I, I must have passed out. For how long? I don't know. When I came to, she was gone. When this uh, accident with the boom occurred... Where was the boat? Well, we were quite some distant, well, several miles from shore. Is your wife a good swimmer? Well, no. Then if she did fall overboard, she'd drown. No, no, because, well, she couldn't. Well, how can you say that? Because nothing can happen to her. Uh, Mr. Burnham, you better explain what that means. What? <laughs> I can't explain it. I can only tell you that nothing can ever happen to her. <sighs> Mr. Burnham, I'm afraid you don't understand the seriousness of your situation. Oh, I understand. I understand that a marriage, my marriage of 45 years is over. But when a man and a wife go sailing and the man returns... A... What did you say about being married for 45 years? Well, today was our 45th anniversary. Mr. Burnham... Your wife has been described as a woman of about 20. I know. I know she hasn't changed one bit in almost... Do you realize it's almost half a century, Sheriff? This has been a... It's been a devastating day for me. I'm, I'm required to rest in the afternoon. Well, I'm sorry. I, I got to get these answers. What happened to your wife? Well, as I say, she had decided to leave me... And, of course, she was right. I was making it difficult for her. Well, when I was knocked unconscious, she may have thought this would be the best time to go. So she sailed the boat to shore, got out, and she sent me adrift again. And where would she go? Away. Lose herself once again in the world. Wearing nothing but a bikini... Carrying nothing? Oh, I'm sure she had access to whatever she needed. I see. You got a picture of your wife? Well, we have only one picture in the house. It was taken the day we were engaged. Here, this one over here on the cabinet. But that, that can't be the way she looks now. Oh, yes, yes, exactly. Oh, no. She's 45 years older. Well, you would think so, but that's not true. When that was taken, I was 25 and she was 19. Today, I'm... Seventy, but she's still nineteen. Sure, excuse me. I'm, I'm very, very tired. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, why don't you just uh, lie down for a few minutes? May I? Thank you so much. That's her, Mrs. Mallory. Please look at this carefully. This is a picture of a nineteen-year-old girl. That's right. That's all she was. And this is her. Mrs. Mallory, this picture is 45 years old. What? Oh. Oh, no, no. Well, why, the dress she's wearing, the hair. Well, those stars have come back, and that's not her boyfriend. It's her husband. But, but she's a young girl. Well, examine this photo very carefully. Mm -hmm. Could it be somebody who resembles her? Let's say uh, her daughter. Look, look, I'm a student of people. Mrs. Burnham had this, this slight squint in her left eye, you see? And a little mole, right side of her chin. And a kind of curved little scar just above her left eyebrow. Mm. Oh, this is Mrs. Burnham. And I saw her just this morning. She can't be close on 70. Well, that would make her older than me. 
Ah, how do you feel, Mr. Burnham? Why have I been arrested? Why... Why am I in the hospital? Why are psychiatrists having a field day with me? Well, it's a part of a mental examination. In other words, the consensus is that that I'm crazy. Oh, let's say that your behavior after you realized your wife was gone has not been normal. Now believe me, Sheriff, when I tell you that my wife is alive and well. I'd like to believe you. But first, you've got to explain certain things you said. You told me she couldn't swim. Yet if she fell overboard, she couldn't drown. That's right. Because nothing can ever happen to her. That's what you have to clear up. I can't. You won't believe me. Why won't I? Well, if I tell the true story, they'll put me in an asylum for the rest of my life. Well... And if you should believe me, they'll put you there, too. Believe me, Mr. Burnham, you've got nothing to lose. Well, my wife was 19 the day I met her 45 years ago. She's been 19 ever since, and she'll be 19 till the world comes to an end. (laughs) That's impossible. Well, I see, that's the point. Now, you say, tell me the story. I no sooner start when you say impossible. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. How did you meet your wife? I met her in a bank 45 years ago. In a bank in Philadelphia. I'd go in there every Friday afternoon to cash my paycheck. And I noticed this very pretty girl. was probably there for the same reason. Well, (laughs) I fell in love with her. But I I didn't know how to go about meeting her. I I was very shy. Well, on this particular afternoon, the bank was crowded, but I saw her standing in line. I was wondering, hoping how I could meet her, when suddenly... Everybody put up your hands. Everybody. Hold on. Don't make a sound. Hey, you. You, crazy dang. Put that phone down. Operator, this is the Merchant's Bank on Chestnut. Put down that phone. There's a holdup in progress. Shoot her. There are six men. Kill her! Kill her! All armed, all wearing masks. Let's get out of here. Let's get out! I'm not sure that anyone in the bank was fully aware of what was happening. At the sound of the shooting, everybody threw himself to the floor or jumped behind desks. But I couldn't take my eyes off her. In the confusion... After the bandits ran out, she just very calmly walked through the door. I ran after her. Hey, listen, listen, I, I have to talk to you. Who are you? I think what you just did was, well, it was, it was absolutely terrific. Would you excuse me, please? No, no, look, look, this isn't a pickup or anything. My, my name is John Burnham. I'm a chemical engineer. What could be more respectable than that? I'm sorry, I'm... Not interested. I looked at that ring finger on your left hand, and I see you're not married or even engaged. Now, if if you're going with somebody or if you're in love with somebody, okay. Okay, I'll take a walk. That's exactly the way it is. I'm very much in love with... No, that can't be true. It can't be because the very second I saw you, I knew. I just knew that you and I... Oh, shut up. Please. No, no, forgive me. Forgive you? Why, I'm... I'm in love with you. No. You mustn't be in love with me. No one must ever be in love with me. Please go. Before it's too late. Before I fall in love with you. Now, look. You you can't help it. You're minding your own business, and suddenly... Just like that, it happens. Yes, I know. I know. I saw you pick up that phone, and when they started shooting at you, it was... Well, it was a miracle. A miracle how all those bullets could have missed you. See, some of them even ripped through your dress. Look, see there? Your dress is torn. John Berman, please turn around and walk away as quickly as you can. Oh, no. Oh, no. You say you love me, but I tell you, one day you'll hate me. How could I ever hate you? They all hate me in the end. They all... What do you mean? How, How many were there? John... I don't care. I shouldn't even be talking to you, but I'm a woman, and like all women, I need love. 
And it's been so long. Oh, how long it's been. I love you. I know that. I should send you away, but I want to be loved again. It's wrong, but I, I can't help myself. What are you saying? Why is it wrong? Maybe this time. Maybe this time it'll be different. Maybe you'll be different. Of course. I will. Yes. Maybe you can be different. Maybe you can do something that none of the others could. Maybe you can find a way for me to die. All right. That's a request you don't hear every day. Why should she want to die? She's young. She's beautiful. She should have a whole glorious life in front of her. And yet, didn't she try to die back there on the bank? Didn't she force the bandits to fire at her? Could every bullet have missed her? We'll try to answer all these questions for you when I return in just a few moments with Act Two. hardly ever a problem. It's living that presents us with all sorts of difficulties. Here we have a young lady who is about to become Mrs. Eleanor Burnham. And what does she want her husband to give her for a wedding gift? She would like for him to find a way for her to die. All this is part of some explaining that John Burnham has to do to the sheriff. And he's describing how things were the day he met his bride-to-be some 45 years ago. What do you mean, find a way for you to die? You should know something about me. Like what? My age, for instance. Mm, 19 or 20? Let's walk inside that restaurant. Oh, sure. How about, how about lunch? You'd better be sitting down when I tell you how old I am. It, it would be wrong for me to let you go one step further without telling you the truth about me. Okay. Let's have the truth. Not that it matters. My age. You said I looked 19 or 20. No. I'm only 18. Well, that's great. I'm 25. I was born in the year 1554. Well, every girl should marry a more mature man. Did you hear what I said? I was born in 1554. Sure. That means you have to be more than 400 years old. It's a, see, it's the same thing for men. They should also marry mature women. John... <laughs> I was 18 years old in the year 1572. <laughs> I've been 18 years old ever since. I simply don't grow older. I can't grow older. That's fantastic. <laughs> Do you realize how long I've lived? How many lives I've lived? What, a, what an absolutely tremendous imagination. I'm telling you the truth. I can't grow older. I can't be killed. I can't die. Well, what's wrong with that? You don't understand. You'll be 30, 50, 65, and I'll still be 18. Oh, is that bad? You'll die, and I'll still be 18. Oh, come on. Now, let's always talk about dying. Everybody dies when his time comes. Not me. My time never comes. I can't die. Now, how do we ever get on this subject, anyhow? You saw. In the bank. They all fired their guns at me. Nothing happened. Well, that's because they all missed. Let me tell you why I can't die. Okay. Okay, if it'll make you feel better. I must tell you. Please listen, and, and then afterward, if you still want to marry me... Well, I am going to marry you no matter what. I was born in Paris. Paris? Well, Darlene, where's your French accent, huh? <laughs> I've had enough time to lose it. I was born in the year 1554. My father was a chemist. Uh -huh. Well, so am I, you see? You see, we have something in common. Today you would have called him an alchemist. He was always experimenting, trying to find what he called the elixir of life. The elixir of life? The elixir of life everlasting. I was 18. I remember it was August 23rd, the eve of St. Bartholomew's Day. I was to marry a young lieutenant in King Charles' regiment. Oh, come on now. No, no. You must let me tell this. It was late at night. And I heard a knock on the door, and when I opened it, 
Philip. Let me in quickly. I must not be seen here. But it's bad luck to see your bride the night before the wedding. Come with me at once. What are you saying? There is no time to lose. I can hide you in my uncle's house. We can trust him. Philip, what are you... The king has planned a massacre. All the partisans of Prince Henri of Navarre and all the Huguenots. You can't be serious. My own regiment is entrusted to carry it out. But it's impossible. <laughs> Please, there is no time to talk, to argue. It has already begun. Oh, my father. You and your father, both of you are marked for death. Now, come, quickly. I won't leave without my father. Get him. We have no time. Well, he's downstairs in the cellar. Hurry. Father? Child, do not interrupt. Father, I... This is almost complete. Father, listen. That glass bottle from which the vapor is steaming, hand it to me. Father, we must leave here at once. Hand me the bottle, child. Caref carefully, it may explode. Oh. oh, oh, my poor, my poor girl. Here, let me see. Oh, dear me, how fortunate. The breaking glass missed your eye and struck you just above the brow. Father, there's going to be a massacre. Philip has come to help us escape. Then I'll press a clean cloth to the wound. It is not deep. We cannot stay here a moment longer. You must wait a moment longer. A moment is all I need to mix the potion. And you ancient gods, in all your might, lead my way. Grant me light. Father. I know. I know. Philip has come to rescue us. But there is no rescue. Philip. We'll never get us through the streets alive. We cannot stay here and be murdered. No, no, no. You will not be murdered. Here. This is now ready. Drink it. Well, what is it? I think I have found it. It's the elixir. Oh, Father, such a thing Such is... a thing is impossible, you say. Drink it. And you will never die. Please, you must... Oh, the massacre has begun. Drink us, quickly. And nothing, nothing will ever be able to harm oh, you. Father, There we... is no other escape. I have found the potion. I have said the prayer. Drink it quickly. Save yourself. Father, you drink. There is only enough for one. I don't want to live if everyone else is... Gonna... I am your father. I command you to drink. Drink. That's it. All of it. All of it. Now. Now, my child. Nothing can harm you. I fainted from fright, from shock. When I recovered later, my father was dead. Beside me. The servants were dead. The house was in ruins. But by that time, the madness had spent itself. It was safe to be on the streets again. I made my way to Philip's house, and he married me. Well, I guess that means that I'm not your first husband, am I? Nor my second, nor my third. You see, my father, at the very last moment, had discovered his elixir of life. And what it does is it prevents you from aging... And aging is what causes death. Well, sure. And whenever a part of my body is injured, it, it heals immediately. So I can't be killed. Now, why would anyone want to kill you? Hmm? You are so adorable. Oh, don't do this to me. Do what? Don't make me fall in love with you. Oh, but I, I intend to do just that. It'll be so much harder for me to leave you when the time comes. <laughs> you, know, you know, you should be a writer. You should write... Horror stories, you know, those science fiction things? I wouldn't know how to write. Oh, you should know how to do everything. I mean, if, if what you're telling me is true, you should be you should be the wisest person in the world. Why? Well, because you've lived for, what, 400 years, according to what you say, and you should have learned things, acquired wisdom. Well, that's not true. I was just an ordinary girl. I had no special talent or ability. And over the years, over and over again... I kept leading the same kind of life. Now, why do you have the need to claim that you've been living... Do you living... notice uh... my left eye? Uh-huh. The scar just above the eyebrow. Hmm. That glass bottle exploded just before I drank the elixir. And that's the last time I have ever been injured. The very last time. Okay. Okay, I believe you. You don't really believe me. Oh, what does it matter? I love you. Love. When you're young, you think love is all there is, and that it lasts forever. It does. I know what love is. And I know what forever is. The nurse.
story strike you as kind of peculiar? Well, Sheriff, I, I didn't care. Mr. Burnham, I'm trying to help. All I know is an elderly gentleman and his very young wife... Oh, no, she's older than I am, than anyone alive today. Could I just tell you what we're faced with? Now, the two of them go off sailing. He comes back. She doesn't. Am I correct so far? Yes. Now, something happened to the wife. The husband doesn't seem to be alarmed. He doesn't notify anybody. I told you why. Why nothing could ever possibly happen to her. Meanwhile, the woman is missing, and you come up with this fantastic yarn. Oh, I admit it sounds fantastic. And you just swallowed it. No, I didn't just swallow it. I went to see a doctor. You went? She's the one who needed it. But she wouldn't go. But why does she lie to me, Doctor? Well, a woman may lie because she's unsure of her husband's love. Oh, that isn't so. No, she knows I love her. I, I couldn't possibly be, be more attentive, more affectionate. There's, well, there's just something strange. Why does she insist on having such a past? <sighs> Look, you'd have to tell me something about her background. Her background? Are her parents living? Well, she claims that her father was killed in the massacre of 1572. Oh. Well, she must have friends. She did go to school somewhere. She was raised someplace. Yes, yes, out west. Good, where? I don't know. She never talks about that. Oh. Well, then, Mr. Burnham, getting down to it, you know absolutely nothing about your wife. Well, none of that seemed important when I fell in love. I see. When you fell in love, you felt that love was enough. It still is. Well, then, why have you come to see me? What? Okay. Okay, I see now that I'll just have to put up with those little fables. It's the only fault she has. Oh, when I think of what's wrong with the wives of other men I know... <laughs> well, a few years went by. We were happy... I started doing well financially. It seemed to me that there was no reason. Well, see, I'm old-fashioned. And I think one of the basic reasons for marriage is a family. No. But you like kids. I've seen you around children. I don't even want to talk about having children. Well, we've been married ten years. You're 28. I'm 18. You should have kids before... Well, your first one before 30. Look at me. Do I look a day older? Well, I... You look ten years older. You're still young, but you're over 30, and, and you look it. All I want is is for us to have children, but if you have a good reason... The answer is no. Well, let it be no, but tell me why. I don't want to bury any more of my children. I can't go through all that again. John, there are certain things you must never ask me. Have you had children? Yes, I've had children. Well, what happened to them? Where are they? They're dead. Dead? How? How? 400, 300, 200 years ago, children died like flies. The, the ones who weren't killed by fever died of old age. I refuse to outlive another child. All right, Eleanor, now look. I think it is time for this nonsense to end. You've got to rid yourself of this terrible delusion. No. Keep away from me. Don't touch me. Eleanor. Let me out of here. Oh, you look like that soldier who stabbed my father. Like the Indian who scalped my daughter. Eleanor! Let me out of here. Eleanor! When she ran out of the house. Her, her car was parked at the curb. And she got inside and drove off wildly, madly. My car was in the driveway and I started after her. We, we lived in the hills. We always loved the country. I was barely able to keep her in view... We were climbing higher and higher along a narrow, twisting road along the side of the mountain when suddenly she took a turn too quickly. The car swerved out of control right through the wire guardrail and down, down, down the side of the hill, turning over completely and landing on the rocks hundreds of feet below. There was an explosion. The wreckage was a mass of bright flames, a fiercely burning funeral pyre. I climbed down the hill as quickly as I could. I, I stood helplessly by the car. 
And then, then she just walked out of the wreckage. Every stitch of her clothing had been burned away. The gold ring must have melted off her finger. But not a hair was singed. There wasn't a mark on her body. She looked at me and smiled. Darling, you'd better lend me your coat. Well, what does it take to make a believer? She was in the car. It did crash. The impact, the flames, would have been enough to kill anyone. Or perhaps anyone not fortified by the elixir of life. It's quite a drink, but it needs a chaser, as we shall discover when I return shortly with Act Three. Age cannot wither nor custom stale her infinite variety, said the poet. Well, our friend William Shakespeare was talking figuratively. For someone whom age really cannot wither, we present Eleanor Burnham, or Mrs. John Burnham, if you prefer. Eleanor claims she was born in 1554, that she drank a mysterious elixir of life when she was 18. And she's been 18 ever since. Or at least that's the story her husband, John, is telling the sheriff. Eleanor... Eleanor, it's... it's a miracle. No, it's not a miracle. It's the elixir. To live through that crash... John, do you believe me? Now do you believe me? Yes, Eleanor. Yes, I have to believe you. Are you telling me that she lived through a car crash like that one? Yes, Sheriff. Yes. (sighs) Mr. Barnum, you're an intelligent man... But you evidently find yourself in, um, well, an intolerable situation. You were jealous of your wife's youth, beauty. You could uh, <clears throat> no longer keep pace with it. Sheriff, I didn't kill her. I love her. So you manufacture this, uh... <laughs> well, it's up to you. We'll drag the lake. We'll find her body. No, no, she went away. To begin another lifetime. No, sir. She might have gone away if you hadn't drowned her. And we know with whom. What are you talking about? Would the man's name be Peter Collins? What? What do you know about Peter Collins? He's been doing some investigating. Your wife has been having an affair. No, it wasn't an affair. We talked about it, Helen and I. (sighs) Well, if it wasn't an affair, what was it? But Eleanor, if it isn't an affair, what is it? I, I was driving into the city and the car started acting up. I had to pull over to the side of the road and he happened by. He was very nice, nice enough to fix it. How many times have you seen him? Well, just, How many? Just a few times. Why? Oh, John, the day you and I met, I, I said, John Berman, walk away. Turn around and walk away fast as you can. One day you'll hate me. That day is here. Why? Do you have to ask why? Look at yourself. You're almost 70. I'm still 18. But, Eleanor... I can't help it. I can't help myself. Please. Oh, John, John. I've never had a chance to become anything but an 18-year-old girl. My blood is 18. My heart. My... The things I want. The things I need. I'm sorry. You're you're no longer the... Eleanor, Eleanor. I love you. It's no longer the kind of love I need. Eleanor. Oh, John. Please pity me. Pity you? Yes, me. How many times have I stood like this, talked like this, had my heart broken like this, and I must do it again and again? Each time I... I hope, I pray, maybe he'll be different. Maybe he'll be different. I thought maybe you'd be different. I tried. I tried to love you more. But I don't want love. 
I've had too much love. I want death. If you really loved me, you'd kill me. Kill me, and I'll be free. How can I kill you? You can't die. Find a way. How? I don't know how. How? What do I know? I'm just a young girl who was born at the end of the Dark Ages. This is a new world. Civilized. Scientific. Can't you find a way? You're a part of that world. You want me to kill you? Kill me. Take me with you when you die. I'll go with you. I love you best. I love you more than any of them. But I, I don't know... For the first time, I have hope. You're a man like my father. You're a chemist. No, no, I'm a chemical engineer. And he was an alchemist. It's the same mystery, isn't it? Well, I... He found an elixir of life. You. You find me an elixir of death. I thought it was crazy. But what could I do? I tried. I had to try. And so I went about it scientifically. Something existed in her blood, her tissues. I boned up again on pathology, biology, hematology. I analyzed her blood. I searched. I tried every approach I could think of. But there was nothing to be seen. Nothing to be found. Did you ever hear your father mention any names of things, of, of chemicals? Oh, sulfur, nitrites, I, I think gold, silver, mercury. Yes, yes, and Oils. What kind of oils? The only kind of oils used in those days were olive oils. They were used for everything, for cooking, for soothing wounds. For soothing wounds. Burns, yes, yes. Now, this looks uh, this potion you drank. What what did it taste like? I can't remember. You must remember. Well, I, it was so long ago. Try, try to remember. Well, they were breaking down the door to kill us. I was so frightened. Please try to remember. Well, he... He recited a certain verse. For, what do you mean, a verse? It was, it was a prayer, a, a magic prayer. I guess you'd call it an incantation. I don't mean nonsense like that. Don't call it nonsense. My father believed it. Without the incantation, it, it couldn't. Nothing could have ever been done. Listen, I, I remember how he would say it. You ancient gods in all your might... Lead my way and grant me light. Well, all I can do is try. Keep trying. And I did, Sheriff. I did. I suggest you either get a new story, or you stick to that one, you try to make it just a bit more believable. I know, I know. It is difficult for you You to... say you tried to find a way to kill her. Yes, and the other morning... I thought I had matched something that... Well, I called her into my laboratory. What is it? Drink it. Do you think you found? I don't know. Drink it. First, you must say the prayer. Eleanor, please. Hold the cup to the light. Now pray. Say it. You ancient gods in all your might, lead my way and grant me light. Oh, oh very well, very well. You ancient gods and all your might, lead my way and grant me light. Now drink it. Well? I don't know. How shall I try to die? Well, have you ever thought of drowning? Well, darling, we're out of sight of everyone now. I should have gone out alone. Why? Why? I want to be here. Well, the Mallorys, they saw us leave. If you come back alone, they might... I know. I know, dear, but I won't come back alone because, you see, you're not going to die. I'm not? No. This potion, this formula, whatever you want to call it, it can't work. I failed you. But you said the prayer. I also overheard the phone conversation. Which conversation? I wasn't asleep. I listened on the extension. I shouldn't have. But you and Peter... Plan to run away today. John. I, I don't blame you. John, if you can't kill me, I can't live with you any longer. And Peter's going to be waiting for you at the south end of the lake. If I'm still alive. You'll be alive. No. Somehow, I, I believe you're the one who's destined to be different. You have found the way to kill me. I found nothing. 
But you said the prayer just the way my father said it, with the same tone in your voice. I hope you'll be happy with Peter. I loved you. Hold down the tiller. I'm going to release the boom. No, don't. John! Oh, oh John! The swinging boom caught me. I heard her scream, and I blacked out. When I came to, well, I told you the story. So you think she ran off with the guy, Peter? Yes, it was what she had planned, and I don't blame her. Mr. Sheriff? Yeah. Uh-huh. Sure. Okay, I'll bring him right over. You uh, want to put on your robe and slippers, Mr. Burnham? Well, where are we going? For a little walk. Just down the hall here. Around the corner. Stop at the next door. Well, why did we come here? That lettering on the door, what does it say? Mo- morgue. Why did we come to the morgue? After you, Mr. Burnham. Why are we here? On the table, Mr. Burnham. You see who that is? On the table? (gasps) No. (gasps) Eleanor. They just got her body out of the lake. She's drowned. Then she... Then I found the elixir. I don't even remember what I mixed. But the important thing... You know what the important thing was, Sheriff? The prayer. The prayer. But Doc says she didn't die of drowning. She's been poisoned. Of course. It was the elixir of death. And now she's free. She may have been free, but poor John wasn't. He was accused of poisoning his young wife. And although the jury lent a sympathetic ear to his story, they turned an analytical mind to the verdict, which was life. Well, I'll be back with other verdicts in just a few moments. of youth, the cult of the young, how we worship them in this country, the young, the strong, the beautiful, how we hate to age, to mature, to grow old, and yet to stand still while the world goes by is to be left behind in a strange alien place forever. Our cast included Jennifer Harmon, Joe Silver, Bryna Rayburn, Ken Harvey, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I'm only saying what everybody else is saying. Yeah, that's what everybody keeps saying, all right. But what? It ain't true. You had the identification down cold. What made you change your mind? Oliver, you were paid off. How much did you get? I didn't get anything. Do you expect me to believe that? Yes. Then you're a fool. You're the one. You're the one who kept saying, don't get involved, don't identify him, think of the safety of your family. You also had a duty as a citizen. Ah, uh, now you're hopping on that bandwagon. What bandwagon? Before the trial, you were saying to me, Ollie, you're crazy. They're going to fish your carcass out of the river. What are you getting mixed up in it for? Okay? So I backed off. And now everybody said... On account of guys like you, crime's going to take over the country. How much did they pay you to keep your mouth shut? That's what I want to know. How much? Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.